Good morning, Daniel from the south of Munich. How are you doing, buddy? Good morning, Mirko. I'm doing well. It's a really hot summer here. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, it's been supposed to have rained already. Um, it's getting really rather dry, a bit worrying, really. Um, we're still missing our third member, Hans, um, due to business travel in the in the, in the Middle East. Um, but hopefully he will rejoin um, our group yeah. soon. But I heard in China it's even 10 degrees uh, hotter than here in uh, in Munich. Eh? So Yeah, it's unbelievable. Just, um, you know... Um, sign sign of the times i guess um our topic for the day um daniel i hope we can um, do a, a quick quick and dirty session on what's going on diplomatically in the world between china and the us and china and germany in that case actually um let's start with the with the visit by blinken he finally made it amazing um remember last time when it was supposed to happen what actually did happen yeah, I think there was a nice uh, distracting little balloon uh, uh, which, which came up, right? And uh, I think this was, uh, I mean, amazing. It, it seems uh, that the US government wanted to uh, keep that under the carpet at that point of time, that they detected this Chinese uh, spy balloon, uh, but then uh, someone else reported about that, so there were they had to, uh, I mean, that came out and then it resulted that this visit was cancelled and or he cancelled it and then the Chinese side of course was very unhappy um, but yeah I think we also got some news now that uh, because before that there was uh, everyone said there's a report on this what is really behind that balloon yeah, yeah um, and then the FBI conducted an investigation but right now it seems we're not, never gonna gonna see or hear about that again right yeah, I think they put this thing to bed uh, for good. It sounded like when when Biden made that statement um, a couple of days ago that you know just for you know the sake of peace, I guess another way to say it is this is really sort of like the paying paying the entrance ticket um, to get to see um, the Chinese side, right? As sad yeah. as it is, but um, here we here we are. But the good thing is, you know, at least Blinken made it. Um, he first met uh, Xin Gang. And um, his real opposite number, if you like, um, on a sort of ministerial level, um, which from the readouts of both sides um, sounded like an OK meeting. The language was, um, um, you know, focusing on the on the positive sides with uh, fewer harsh words than in the next meeting that he had with Wang Yi who's kind of like the highest representative in diplomatic terms on the party side of things, which um, um, Wang Yi made very clear. He has a bit of a, a more sort of aggressive take um, on things and asking the US side to sort of stop their erroneous position on, on a lot of matters, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you have to imagine how how far these uh, relations have deteriorated over the last couple of years. Uh, that the fact right now that uh, they they are meeting, that Blink is going there and making a visit is already is a huge uh, I mean breakthrough. I mean it's quite it's quite alarming. I mean I'm personally I'm very I mean positive that the meeting took place right and that that they they came together. Unexpectedly, the rhetorics maybe were not perfect, but. Um, also, as some commentators have seen, at least this, this, this gives us the hope that the things won't get uh, much worse from here right now. Huh? And I mean, they're, they're, they're not good, right? But at, mm -hmm. at least maybe it puts a, a bottom now to this escalation, this vicious cycle yeah, of, of everyone blaming the other side and things getting more and more harsh. Huh? Uh, exactly. Despite, I think, the one thing uh, a lot of people are talking about is that the both, both sides' military is not talking to each other. Um, and I think Blinken also tried to, to, to recommend to resume these kind of talks, I mean, which is very important, I mean, in, in order to avoid potential accidents from happening or misunderstandings and so on. But it seems this still is not, uh, is not resuming so far, right, Merkel? 
Yeah, I think um, there are voices in the U.S. also calling for lifting of sanctions against Li Shangfu, the current um, defense minister. Um, and so that's not happening. And so I guess that's part of the equation that the Chinese say, you know, as long as you've got sanctions on our guy, why should he even talk to you? Right. Um, yeah. And then, you know, they may they may have a point on, on, on that. And I think the only positive outcome was that there is more concerted action against um, the sort of the precursor producers for fentanyl, which is, you know, yeah. really part of the um, opioid right. crisis in, in the U.S. Yeah. And so that's that's good news in itself. And for the for the time being, while this was happening, there was still speculation whether actually he will get to meet um, Xi Jinping. And in the end, it did happen. It was just 35 minutes. Um, but, you know, out of courtesy, um, or as so was the, um, the, the readout on the Chinese side, um, the meeting did happen, and the pundits in the U.S. were quickly to compare this um, to old pictures from 2018 when Mike Pompeo was there last time, and the seating arrangement was very different. Um, but I think this is just, you know, these are such small details. I think nobody should get hung up on 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 that. At least they met, right? Yeah, but Mirko, did he mention that this is the second American friend he met this, uh, this year? <laughs> no, he didn't say that, but people were waiting for it. Yeah, he calls Bill Gates that, but, you know, he's, uh, no, that's not, we're not on a, on, a, on a friend level here, I I guess. That is that is uh, yeah. pretty clear. But sort of complete the picture on that, and that's always the fun part of dealing with China and sort of Chinese politics and culture. <laughs> um, the, the, the real uh, China pundits, they quickly pointed out, that there were these lotus uh, placed in the in the middle of this entire seating arrangement, and and I, I just sort of quickly for for uh, viewers of our channel want to point out what the lotus in Chinese, uh, which is called hehua, really stands for, because the he there in the second tone you can also find it in the <coughs> for cooperation, which is hezuo, and also in the word for peace, which is hepi. And so even Xinhua came out with a Chinese piece, uh, an English piece, um, explaining to the foreigners who might not sort of uh, have that sort of intimate knowledge of Chinese culture, what really was um, um, supposed to be expressed by placing the flowers there. So a sign of wishing for cooperation and peace. Um, and so it's a nice flower, Daniel. What yeah, do you think? It's good. I mean, after so much, uh, let's say, very, let's say, bad rhetorics on both sides, right? Um, it's good to see that, right? And um, I, I think it's a very um, positive sign uh, that Xi Jinping took the time to, to meet him, right? That wasn't sure, right? A lot of people doubted whether this is going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think whatever is your political position i mean you must i mean it, it, it's so important they're talking to each other yeah i mean if you're not talking face to face right uh, things can't get better so exactly. uh, from that point of view i think that's that's hopefully a little bit a turning point yeah they're not the only ones talking uh li chiang arrived in in, in germany and uh, yeah, first met with him right to yeah, his first trip, and it's uh, you know that's that's a good thing. That's a good thing too. He first met with um, our president Steinmeier, uh, really sort of diplomatic protocol, I guess. Um, but um, and also I, I've heard that uh, uh, Scholz didn't even have time. He was courting the Intel guys for their thirty billion dollar investments, for which the German government also is going to spend uh, ten billion euro uh, of subsidies. Can't be. Can't be true, Mirko. Huh? He prioritized <laughs> the Intel visit to the to the Chinese uh, prime minister. Yeah, quite, 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 uh, quite a not exactly face-saving uh, gesture. But he made time yeah. um, in the evening then, after a full day of of Li Qiang's presence in Germany already, then meeting him over over dinner, and um, and then the real stuff really began next day. Uh, for these uh, what they call the Ch German Chinese sort of government uh, consultations. And um, that was quite interesting because they had a they had a um, a presser right after um, where um, and I'm going to sort of um, quickly show that here. Um, I thought this is uh, kind of interesting to watch the di dynamics. So, yeah, so what we can see here, uh, Daniel, is the the press conference and the 
stunning moment where basically um, they just walk away without any questions from journalists in the audience. Um, and that's why I showed that I showed that earlier, Dana Heide from Handelsblatt. She says she's never seen anything like this before, right? And basically, um, as was made public later on, this was a request from the Chinese side to not allow to not allow questions. Right? This is yeah, I never paid thing. so close attention to this before, right? Uh, I mean, of course, in China, it's very normal that in most cases there won't be a chance for questions, right? But I. I uh, I wasn't aware that there seems to be always the standard when uh, when the chancellor speaks that there's a there's Q and A. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, and so specifically, I just went back and took a look at what happened uh, last time, and this was actually in 2018. So we haven't had these um, government consultations for four five years. But Li Keqiang was the um, the prime minister back then, and here is a quick piece on um, the presser with Angela Merkel, and you can see, can hear quite clearly um, questions being asked by journalists on actually very sensitive topics as we have here on human rights. Herr Ministerpräsident, erlauben Sie eine Frage zu den Menschenrechtslage, weil es hier Kritik von der Menschenrechtsbeauftragten der Bundesregierung gab. Ähm, vielleicht können Sie uns einen Grund geben, warum es Klagen gibt, dass Sie härter gegen Kritiker vorgehen als I mean, just as an example, Daniel. Oh. Huh? So this was the these were these were the old days where things like that were were yeah. still being allowed. That's crazy. And for five years, we didn't have this kind of of meeting, right? Yeah, you see, I think 2019. I'm not sure was that the year of the elections or maybe already. It's yeah. not been an annual thing, but yeah, it's been it's been a long time. And so, anyhow, I think so. Not allowing the questions in the end, I think that might be that might be fine. Um, there was a lot of business, just like last time when Scholz went to China in November with this rather large business delegation, and you had all of them in in, in the same room. And um, I think you know, I think that's still part of um, the the <coughs> political business, you could say, to talk about yes. this. What was interesting is, and we talked about this earlier, Daniel, is that Li Qiang, Li Qiang was trying to bring the enterprises into his game. Do you know the details about this? Yeah, so, I mean, firstly, it's it's very clear. Huh? In China, the prime minister, and now even more so under Li Qiang, his only job is to focus on economy, right? And 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 uh, this whole thing of de-risking, I think, Merkel, he was the first uh, guy we were aware about, you know, speak, really use this word of de-risking, right? This true function in, yeah. uh, in, in Chinese. So it's very... Uh, it's very interesting, but he said, "Okay, of course, everyone should should do the risking, but it should be a job of of companies who who, who need to manage their risk, right, and not not the government." So it's an interesting, let's say, approach from his side to to take out the political issue and say, "Look, we are we are working together, and companies are good enough to 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 make their own decisions." And of course, all these big German companies on the table, they are exposed to china all is all for all of them their biggest market one third of their of their revenue they they, they know right i mean that uh, that there's a strong uh, dependence and so on yeah so um i think this is a, a, i would say in a, um, he's trying to go back to the times when let's say the german china relationship is just just basically determined 90 percent by economic uh, relationship right a very good one yeah. by the way yeah? and yeah, uh, that, yeah. that's his approach right or what do you think yeah that's why i mean a lot of people were comparing it to the angela merkel times not a big not a big difference and uh, i think it's a bit strong uh for him to say the enterprises should be the ones making the decision very well knowing that they are the ones in a German economy making those decisions. We don't have state capitalism where things are dictated um, by the government and by the party. Um, so, you know, it is really um, on these um, German conglomerates to decide for themselves. Obviously, they have to be aware of the of the pitfalls right, that comes, yeah. comes uh, along with investing in China. Yeah. But I think he knows, right? I mean, that uh, there, there might be efforts from, from the European Union to come up with certain policies against China. So now China very strongly saying there should be no discrimination of, of, of China uh, in that sense, right? Yeah. I mean, it's always this, this dependence and de-risking. It's very ironic, right? But yeah, I believe, right, and really strong 
cooperation in both directions because one plus one is bigger than two. Uh, but let's say China has started a couple of years ago, right, to become more autark autark from the West uh, and do their yeah. own things, right? And this is still hasn't changed. Uh, this is China 2025 and so on. And, and I mean, if you look at these German companies, like Mercedes, BMW, they have they have their biggest business in China, but it's doomed to go down massively over the next years, yeah, because of the yeah. Chinese EV industry coming up and so on, right? So, um, yeah, the, the the question is how much really uh, Germany needs to think about a real China strategy. And uh, I I also saw a comment here by some some people. They said, I mean, but it's quite obvious, yeah, that that the German government doesn't have a very clear strategy, yeah. uh, except for let's say making sure the the business side is is uh, is doing well, right? So, uh, but besides that, there's not a clear strategy, right? Yeah, I think that's sort of a major uh, criticism. Really, we're going to look, take a look in a moment at the at the um, conference that's happening at the same time. Um, but again, it's 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 rather business sort of um, dominated. The good thing though is, you know, I mean, um, I think it was Van der Leyen's speech that for the first time mentioned the word de-risking instead of decoupling and it's very different yeah. but so far the chinese have been saying in their local press that it's just all the same it's just a different yeah. different name but it means the same yeah. which in reality it's not right and i think this is for the first time evidence that you see a chinese chinese minister i mean a prime minister yeah. um to say um Chu Fengxian and Tuo Go as being two different things, like de-risking yeah. and decoupling is different, right? And so yeah. I think you can see them come around to the new term, but at the same time, you also want them, um, they want the German enterprises to decide this. And so that's, you know, maybe yeah. that's 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 okay. So just to quick, take a quick look at the at this um, German-Chinese um, forum for uh, economic and uh, technological cooperation. Um, all the big guys are here. Do you recognize anyone there? On the yeah, program? yeah, yeah. My old uh, well-known entrepreneur, Robin Zhang, in the middle. Uh, so the founder of uh, of CATL. Oh, okay. Zhang Yuquan. Oh, so... Yeah, he's an amazing entrepreneur, has created the biggest battery company in the world, and now he already uh, has his German plant running in Air Force, right? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so this was this was quite the quite the event. There was uh, actually Li Xiang and, and Olaf Scholz are stopping by later as well for the signing um, ceremony. I just wanted to quickly um, show here our viewers um that there have been there's been a sort of some massive signing actually maybe just quickly look into this here lots of people signing stuff i don't know all of them i just like i think it's kalenios yeah, right? yeah. Zipsa and kalenios mercedes bmw Volkswagen, there was I roland think, bush yeah. was there with um siemens yeah so quite some quite some um, signing going on. You can see here Richard Walker from Deutsche Welle, he summarized, um, who was present like the th three German car giants, three Chinese ministries, two German ministries, one, one Chinese economic planning mega agency, I think that's the NDRC, um, and one German industrial conglomerate, I guess that's, that must be Siemens then, I, yeah. I would guess. So lots of, lots of things being signed. I'm not sure what the actual content of these sort of cooperation agreements are but i guess it's, but it's, um, it's interesting because it's all with the ndsc or with government um and it's it's cooperation in certain areas related to uh, renewable energy and so on right uh, but what you what what was always in the past meetings you heard these gigantic numbers of new investment figures in the one or the other direction so this this seemed to be missing this time yeah, that's right. I haven't I haven't heard any any numbers either. But um, yeah, I think lots of stuff happening. You know, there are things you can criticize, but sort of bottom line is, you know, they're talking, they are meeting. This is all good. You know, things of of course can be can be handled better in in, in details. Um, but overall, I think uh, it's been it's been a good week. We just also yeah. hit the twenty minute mark. Uh, Daniel, anything um, closing comments for today? No, it's good. I think uh, hopefully we'll see more dialogue and uh, this, this goes into the right direction. Nevertheless, I hope there will be a bit more of, uh, of a clear plan uh, from the German and European Union side uh, related to China. I mean, currently it's still a bit messy. 
Awesome. Thanks so much for your input, Daniel. I will see you soon and let's hope we get some rain. Bye-bye. <laughs>